don't they look lovely? We're in, uh, <coughs> hello, we're in, uh, in mid, mid February here and uh, the garden's starting to wake up and uh, plants like the snowdrops leading the way. There is a temptation doing things like these YouTube videos to kind of only show the good bits of, uh, of, of the garden, uh, which is why I started off with the snowdrops. But to be honest, the garden doesn't always look good in every corner of the garden. So this doesn't look so great, <laughs> doesn't look so great, does it? We had to put some mesh over the, um, the pots of bulbs we planted in the autumn because the squirrels uh, were having a go. But it seems to have worked and you can see the, um, the bulbs are coming through there. So I'll probably take those out from under the mesh um, soon. And uh, those croakers look okay, but not as lo good as they could because I'm gradually trying to remove all this um, Lysimachia creeping jenny, which is taking over. But well, what I really wanted to show you was these bad boys here, these, uh, these logs, which have enabled us to kind of create this rather nice kind of curved raised bed um, and we did this back I, I think it was about 2002 yeah so about 20 years ago actually and uh, predictably enough some of the logs need replacing you can see there's some new ones there uh, and uh, but you know every year we need to go around and just um, pull out a few that are starting to go before they crumble completely um, and replace them with some new ones and the first challenge <laughs> is how you get the old log out because they're concreted in there um, they needed to be concreted in to hold back the soil to have the strength there to hold back the soil um, so i'm gonna show you the uh, the method that we've developed to uh, to achieve uh, that goal it's not easy but we've worked out how to how to do it here goes Right, so here we go. We've got a, a heavy old iron bar there, which we're going to use to see if we can get this this log. Can you see he's starting to um, to crumble there, and he's going at the um, he's going at the base. Uh, so we're going to use the iron bar to see if we can get in to as a good third of the um, of the log is actually underground in the in the concrete there, which we've got to try and get the whole of that out so we can get the new log in <clears throat> so yeah the um the new log has been double or triple treated with um uh, a wood preserver so painting it on letting it dry off and then painting some more on um on that side well all, all, all the way over the log and then once that's dried out i go around then with um some uh, kind of like pitch some bitumen based um wood treatment to kind of seal to some measure at least the um the areas that are going to be in contact with the soil so the back of the log and the um and the bottom there when this is knocked in we're going to see just the kind of the the plain front there so uh if we look at some of these others that i've put in over the last year or so yes you can see behind there that they've been um, extra treated there to try and give us uh, an extra few years of longevity. That's a good word, isn't it? Right, enough waffle, enough talk. Let's see if we can get one of these logs out. As usual, it's very hard to film this and do the hard work at the same time. But what I've done is I've driven the iron bar just in kind of to the, the top of the underground bit there i've tried to driven it into the um into the the, the base just on the edge of the concrete and the, the, the trick is you don't want to crack and break the concrete but you need to get sufficient power behind that that pole to be able to embed it into the um into the log so that when we push down can you see what's happening we're starting to slide the log up oh here he comes Come on, son. Well, I have to say, that's been the easiest or one of the easiest logs to get out ever. Um, sometimes it helps to uh, remove some of the soil on the backside. I should have done that first. So there's less resistance for the log to, to be pulled up. But I think now he's sufficiently, 
out. Where are we? Let's see if I can pull him up. There you go. Move that out of the way. And he's out. <clears throat> you can see where I managed to get the, um, the iron bar bedded into the solid base there. And with a little bit of leverage, we've slid him straight out. Oh, look at that. So I'm gonna give that a quick clean out to make sure that there's no um, debris in the bottom and um, <laughs> move that little worm out of the way. Uh, and then um, we'll put this new log in and give him a little tap down. So far, so good. Right, well actually it was worth getting my gloves on and digging down there and kind of using my fingers and, and prizing out. I got quite a bit of soil and stone out from the bottom which need to be completely clear. You want to have a nice clean hole which we have now so that the um, the post can slide all the way into the bottom of the, um, oh look at that, bottom of the hole and end up being at the same level as it was before. So, um, you know, you, we, we don't want the post sticking up like that. Uh, I think it'll only just require a gentle tap down. <laughs> Need to make sure that you've got the, the black treated section at the back there before you knock it in. A little bit more. <laughs> well, look at that. I'm an engineer and I didn't know it. That might be a slight exaggeration. Um, look, I'm sure there are other ways of doing this. We'd be very keen to hear if you've um, discovered another way of, uh, of solving this, this problem um, where you've used logs for soil retention. There might be better ways. Um, so don't take this as the only way. Uh, it's the way that works for us. And um, I hope that's of some help to you. Any questions, any comments, we'd love to hear um about that in the comment section on our youtube channel thanks so much bye